It's about um, the future is biology uh, If you notice, there's a capital letter for INS That's not even seen It's just to emphasize It is uh, my personal view that biology will be um, How do you say it? In the forefront of science uh, of things to uh, become in the research area. So, of things to come, this is a summary of my talk. The uh, introduction, uh, talk about biology, perception, probation, uh, why the future is biology. Uh, and we're going to talk about two, you can say, hot areas in biology right now systems biology and synthetic biology. And uh, we're going to leave it, uh, cap off with some successful. Uh, design, engineering, and uh, inspired by biology. Okay, biology by definition. Well, this is just a textbook definition. So, from this, you can see that it encompasses every aspect of living organism. Right? Whether it is plants, animal, bacteria, it is water, it is all this application. So biology also means that we study the processes, the life processes of the phenomenon of this group of uh, organism. For example, biology of viruses. It's a, it's a term we use when we say biology of viruses. We mean we study every aspect of the viruses: uh, replication, uh, life cycle, uh, biochemistry, analysis, components, etc., etc. So this is how I define biology in a sense. Okay, so first of all, we can look at this bit of uh, history of biology. I think uh, we all started, well, no, we all, sorry, biology started by looking inwards. Inwards means it's, it's the easiest thing to do. Okay? It's the easiest thing to do. You start off by examining yourself, okay? yourself, your surrounding. So biology can be, can be considered the earliest form of science, in a way. Some physicists or chemists might disagree, but okay, if you look at the history itself, uh, Historia Plantarum, this is the oldest, you can say, textbook of science, which is written about 300 BC. It is a 10 book encyclopedia of plants written by uh, Theophrastus. Okay? This is a copy of the updated version written in. 1200 AD by the Italian. So it shows that you know one thing: biology is so so called the earliest in the forefront of research. And secondly, you cannot run away from textbook in biology. You know you have to do lots and lots of reading, and that what is what puts some people away compared to maths, physics, and so on and so forth. Uh, again, this also. You know, uh, tells you that biology is a very descriptive science. Lost a lot of description, a lot of stories, you can say. To, to make it so, again, looking inwards, you have, for example, here, I think you're familiar with him, Ubusina. Ubusina, Ubusina, Ubusina. This is his famous book, uh, The Channel Minister, Al Tanun Pilati. He he died at the age of 58. Uh, or here, the age of uh, retirement in Malaysia. 58. And uh, after he died, he wrote 450 books. 450 books. 150 of the books survived to today. <laughs> You're not yet 58, right, bro? Almost. 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 <laughs> so, he actually started writing at the age of 17. So why are you seeing him as an example? He is he epitomized what we call uh, a thorough scholar, science scholar, which is biology centered. For example, he's a poet, he's a, he's a writer, he's a lawmaker, he's a scientist, he's a hafiz, he's with a fit that I think almost none of us can ever achieve in our lifetime in this current uh, scenario of uh, you know, our lifestyle and everything. So again, okay, this is Robert Hooke, Micrographia 665. Okay, 
what biology does is biology allows you to okay you examine something you look at something you have a microscope okay you can look at things so the first stage you can say in the development of biology is that everything was focused on finding out about yourself about your surrounding you know examining things so biology had a kick start because during this time you do not have for example equipment to measure physics or you know uh, in terms of uh, complicated chemistry and stuff it's easy for you just to take a lens go out to a puddle of water and look at all the microbes and you can describe everything else so this is what Robert Hood has you know just brief description so easy to do a good head start and again this is Louis Pasteur 1895 and everybody knows the pasteurization process is uh, he sort of uh, epitomized the 1800s sort of naturalization, uh, naturalization of the science of biology I think and he starts off applying the concept of you can say biotechnology in terms of using biological principle along with manufacturing technology and uh, it's a little bit of his time and next okay then what happens biology qualitative to quantitative okay then what happens here is this this is structure of uh, DNA, you have ATGC, right? ATGC. Uh, this structure was determined in 1953 by Watson and Crick. This is the original drawing that led them to the Nobel Prize of uh, chemistry for Watson and Crick. So, what happens after this? Okay. After they found out this DNA, so people can actually quantify biology. Previously, you have botanists who just, you know, breed two species of plants together and if you're lucky, you get the species that you want. So there's no quantitative uh, method to it, it's just element of luck. But after they found out the existence of the DNA, they know that there are genes, genes are divided into two copies, one from parental, uh, one from mother, one from father, so everything is starting to be quantified. Then uh, you have Mendel here. Mendel is a molecular geneticist. He determines that there are genes, there are uh, elements of hereditary transfer from your grandfather to your father to you and your children. So this starts off the element, the new side of biology. Okay. Again, after that, after the, the defining moment where okay, everybody says okay, right? There's DNA, right? Remember during this period, okay, the people in this era, 1890s, 1900s, they think that in the sperm, right, this is a very, very small man encapsulated in a single sperm. So they have, they call it homunculus. So whenever they say, oh, okay, they are actually individual person that will grow inside the womb of a woman. Okay, this is the scientific mindset of that time. Only after Mendel proved that no, there are only genes inside this uh, sperm, half of it in the sperm, half of it in the ovum, then people start to change the mindset. So once they found out the DNA, we have the resurrection of whole technology, biotechnology. Okay? Why? Because previously, okay, for example, biotechnology is a 7,000 year old technology. People have been doing fermentation since uh, Essenian, Mesopotamian, Babylonian, 500 BC, 5000 BC, 7000 BC. Right? But with the DNA, now they know that okay, using fermentation, you have bacterial processes, you can put in genes, DNA, you can spice up, okay, do recombinant engineering. So it resurrects the process. It quantifies and says, okay, we know why this happened, we know how this happened, rather than Okay, we're gonna mix and match together and hope we get we pray for the best. Right? So biology is this is one step, qualitative to qualitative, sparked off by the discovery of DNA. Alright, so biology the future. Okay, what I mean the future is now. Okay, initially, okay, when uh, uh, Newton, Newton wrote the book 1697. 
principia mathematica. Okay. In that book, Newton says everything you know F equals M A. You know uh, Newton uh, laws of thermodynamics, first law, second law. So the way the scientists treat is that everything else, our body is actually random mass of chemicals acting together. There's no sense of being. There's no us. It's just we are just a product of our chemical uh, processes. So once after that, everybody was focusing towards physics, towards chemistry, towards astro physics, uh, going to the skies. But now we have a uh, refocusing back into biology. Why? First, there's a diminishing return in science. What do you mean by diminishing return in science? We cannot achieve the sense of discovery that have been achieved before us without spending more and more money. For example, to do a synchrotron, to study you know, quantum mechanics. Build a synchrotron 15 kilometers in diameter, right? Just to examine the principle of quantum mechanics. We have reached a stage where, but to achieve something, to achieve a very, very momentous discovery, we need to spend lots and lots of money. So the more money you spend, is what is the trend right now? Okay, because we have reached the limits of physics, the limits of chemistry, the limits. What we want, what we need to do now, okay, is fill the gaps. We already know the basic principle. We believe in that. Okay. But one area is left untouched is biology. For example, we don't even know how a person remembers. We don't even know how the immune system remembers all the 16,000 possible mutations of the uh, antisense or the antibody. We don't even know why, for example, Dolly. Do you remember Dolly? The goat, right? Okay. Dolly was the, uh, the goat sheep. Sorry. The sheep was sick. Yeah, yeah, okay. Dolly was created from a memory cell of a six-year-old sheep. You take a cell from a six-year-old sheep, put it in the womb, okay, clone it, put it in the womb, and out comes Dolly. But Dolly exhibited diseases that is associated with old age, even though it is only five years old. Just imagine if you clone someone. If I clone a man right here now. Okay, when he grows up to five years old, even though he's five years old, he will have diseases associated with the age of the original cell where the person you know originated. Let's say the clone comes from a 50-year-old man. He wants to clone himself. Okay? When the boy is age 55, uh, five, sorry, five, his actual cell age is 55. It is as if the cell remembers. Okay, we can't even solve that. We don't know why. We don't even know why uh, the cell remembers it is 55. Okay, there are elements in the cell that is not dis necessarily dependent on DNA. Okay, we don't know. Okay, so biology is right. It's right for research. There's a lot of areas. For example, I, I can talk about uh, genomics. I can talk about uh, biodiversity. For example, biodiversity. All right. How many plants, how many ethnobotanical plants that we haven't yet determined the active compounds? Okay, first, diminishing return of science. Secondly, reductionism versus integrative biology. What is reductionism? This is biology, in the sense, we used to dismantle everything. We understand a very simple component, but we do not understand the context of the component in the whole system. So the target is now is how do you integrate, how does this component interact with another component, how does the interact with another component, we have the map. Okay, increase predictability with the genes, with the uh, DNA, we have increased predictability. Usually when you have cloning, it's pure luck whether you get the transformed organism. But as we progress right now, we have the means to make sure that the progeny of the cells are predictably mutated. Uh, Multi-spirit availability. Okay, previously biologists work alone. Now, okay, nobody wants to make friends with biologists, right? That's the trend. But nowadays, you have bioinformatics, you have biochemistry, you have bio nanotechnology, you have all these multidisciplinary availability to biologists. 
which allow biologists to study areas that previously unable to study. For example, using the computational ability, right? Computational, you have programming, etc., etc. Then again, we have enabling technologies. We have a lot of enabling technologies that allows us to explore something that previously cannot be done. We have high throughput capability. Previously, to study one gene, it takes you a year or one PhD student. Now, it, it takes you only a master's student or an undergraduate degree student. Alright. So, one area I'm going to talk about systems biology. The system biology is about studying the whole system. Rather than study one cell, you study how the cell interacts with other cells in the body. For example, you have 100 trillion cells in your body right now. How does 100 trillion cells coordinate with each other? For example, if you look at your hands, okay, your right hand and left hand, the fingers are almost approximately at the same length. How does this finger know how long to grow? The length of it to grow? You can't see the other finger on the other hand. For example, your ears. How does the body achieve symmetry? Is there a signal? Okay, the right ear says, okay, stop growing because the left ear has stopped growing. There's no way to know. How does your body achieve this symmetry? Right? So, okay, this is the idea of systems biology. First, you have the gene, then you have the protein. From the genes, you get the protein, then you get the system. Then from the system, you have all these functions where you want to clean up the environment, sequester excess carbon, produce use energy. So what you need to do is systems biology allows you to study all within the context of each other. That's what system biology does. Rather than previously you have one researcher studying this protein, 100% protein structure, function, enzyme, genetics and everything. But how does this protein contribute towards for example cleaning up the environment or how does the protein contribute towards one of the metabolic pathway in the particular cell that helps clean up the environment so it's ideal we know a lot of things right now what we need to do is make sense of the thing that we know alright so this is some of the areas we have transcriptomics we have proteomics metabolomics glycomics interactomics so everything we mix except for economics uh, metabolomics, as the name suggests, metabolism, lipomics is uh, carbohydrate. This is component of systems biology. Another area is synthetic biology. Okay, synthetic biology, okay, is the idea of having synthetic genes. Okay, is in contrast to genetic engineering. What genetic engineering does? We have a cell. Okay, you create the cell, you put, the, you put in the gene, and you hope the cell works. Now you build from ground up everything that the cell needs, you put in the cell rather than putting a single gene. Okay? It is like an engineering approach. You build component by component. Okay, this is uh, three case studies of synthetic biology. Okay, this is a photosensitive biofilm. Okay, you have a biofilm. Okay? Hello world, this is standard programming, <laughs> right? So, you flash light towards the biofilm, the individual cell that has engineered cell will produce a colorization or an enzyme that will correspond to the light put on this biofilm. Okay, so basically you can have a, an organic film that responds to light. Okay. Another thing is a vesicle bioreactor. Okay, what does this do? This vesicle bioreactor, it simply does, okay, just imagine if you churn out oil, you have all the bubbles, right? Take one bubble, put in a cell component, and put in the gene that corresponds to green fluorescence. And you get the green color. Without even having a nucleus, without even having DNA, without even having a living cell. You just put in one vesicle, one bubble, put in cell components, without nucleus, without DNA, without everything, put in the gene. And you get the expression. Another one is Cynthia. This is the first synthetic organism. Uh, it is developed by Dr. Craig Bender. 
Okay, it's called Mycoplasma Laboratory. I'm just created in the laboratory. So these are three examples of what we have achieved with synthetic biology. Okay, this is a database, uh, a research database. So if you're interested after this to look at uh, the areas that they focus on synthetic biology, it covers uh, theoretical, uh, practical engineering, uh, even products, uh, nanotechnology. Uh, it's fully accessible at www.synthetic-biology.info. Right? This is a, a, an EU initiative where they do a literature and data mining and compile about 700 papers they focus on synthetic biology. Okay, just to cap off the lecture for today, uh, inspired by the community, setting you familiar with Velcro. Right? So this is uh, the original plant. Okay, it's called the Bodog, it's a thistle. If you go to Scotland, the official flower of the Scotland is the thistle. So, but this is species predominantly in Germany and the uh, barbarian uh, countryside. It's called Actium Lapa. So, this is the actual burst that inspired the design of Velcro. Uh, this is the lotus effect, not the car, but the flower. Okay. So, uh, what what they did was they did, they designed a surface that mimics lotus. Uh, leaves where it does not allow the water, you, know, you can see it graffiti here, uh, it will sort of roll off the surface and picking up all the sort of dirt. Okay, all they have, they have applied this in oil refineries. So the surface is designed in such a way that uh, you will not get uh, pollutants fouling up the inside of the tubes. So this is how they design. So again, it's inspired by the Lotus and uh, Lemurus Terra. Uh, okay, this is gecko tape. Gecko tape is uh, okay, cicak, right? Cicak, gecko. Okay, you've noticed that they will never fall off, right? Uh, this is because they have this uh, two micron size about diameter. Uh, so the small V like appendages on the fingers. You have about a hundred million per square centimeter. Okay. Because of the presence of this, you have van der Waal forces. Similar van der Waal forces, can you see? So the van der Waal forces allow the the gecko to stick to the wall. Right? So they have mimic this uh, using a material called uh, Kapton. Okay? But the only problem they cannot mass produce this on the last scale but the adhesion power is one cubic centimeter can uh, hold up one kilogram so they're looking at for example tires uh, special paint uh, fastening for equipment then uh, you have uh, riblets okay riblets is drag reduction by shark skin if you if you hold the body of the shark it, it is sort of a finely coarse material but if you look microscope you see it will look like this it has small ribs and these ribs actually will produce some kind of uh, eddy process on the surface of the uh, between the surface the, the physical hard surface and the air so this shark skin has inspired airbus to coat the aeroplane, which has a 1% fuel uh, saving. So, to sum it up, okay, biology is the basis for technology of the past. Okay, uh, everybody is using biology, fermentation, agronomy, botany. So it will be in the future, uh, enabling through multidisciplinary contribution. So. To say that, okay, we're going to do this alone? No, we can't do this alone. We need physicists, chemists, computer scientists for support. So it's a collective effort. So this is where, uh, you know, we take nature as an inspiration. We work together, you know, probably biology at the forefront, I don't know. And the rest uh, help push uh, biology to the 
research uh, future. Final note, okay, this is uh, Richard Feynman, Nobel laureate. Uh, he says the age in which we live is the age in which we are discovering the fundamental of nature and that day will never come again. Yeah? That's what he said. No, we have passed that. We have passed. Fundamental laws, laws of nature has been discovered. Well, except for, for probably quantum mechanics, super string theory, all this. But these are beyond the means of normal FRGS, e science dependent uh, researchers. Uh, but he said that it will interest uh, one level of phenomenon uh, to study the phenomenon, in this case, biology. That's what he said uh, in terms of uh, in his book 1965. Uh, I think uh, I get that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for very interesting presentations. Uh, probably we can switch our fields, like some biocatalyst, or property, something like that. And now I would like to open uh, to the audience for any discussion and questions. Uh, Yes, thank you for like uh, in FDP, uh, as the name of Konons, is that there's bio uh, science and bioengineering. Uh, perhaps uh, some people might have been misled that bioengineering is the kind of the hard side, like the classical engineering side. Uh, whereas, uh, as you have um, presented, it is more like molecular engineering side. Uh, but how about um, the application of uh, the biology uh, to chemical engineering, such as in, uh, in the bioprocess? Is there been any uh, uh, developments whereby uh, new, new um, advances have been uh, uh, contributed to the engineering side, the hard engineering side? Okay, uh, first of all, uh, in terms of the definition of bioengineering, personally, uh, well, this is my personal uh, understanding and what I uh, I believe, bioengineering is actually an area suitable. If, if you want to take you take an example, it will be biomedical engineering. Okay. That is, to me, the most accurate representative of bioengineering. My personal. <laughs> Understanding because from my observation around the world, when you see bioengineering, bioengineering is always about, for example, prosthetics. Okay, for example, implants. For example, you engineer material structures based on components. You know, I, I don't know, scientific, futuristic uh, components material to fit into a biological or medical application. For example, you know. Uh, inside of the, when you, when you break your hips, hip replacement, you need all these uh, prosthetics to replace the broken bones and everything. Uh, for example, synthetic bones, or for example, artificial immune system, things like that. Uh, artificial heart. To me, that is what I think best described by injuring. When you say by injuring in the bio process, they don't call it bio engineering, they call it bioprocess engineering because it involves the process itself, the process of utilizing what biological principle, for example, fermentation. It is a process. So how do you engineer the process to optimize the products they produce? Uh, for example, you have implementation, you have primary metabolites, secondary metabolites. Okay, how do you want to ensure the primary secondary metabolites are reduced while enhancing the secondary metabolites, which is important and uh, have commercial value. So you play around with all these, uh, uh, all these, uh, you can say, parameters. Uh, that's, that's my question uh, In terms of uh, uh, the contribution of biology, if I remember, the bigger contribution in terms of biology to bioprocess engineering is actually one is to identify, for example, the component for the process itself, for example, the best bacteria, you identify the best, uh, for example, uh, oxidation uh, level, how much oxygen you, you identify the components itself, 
rather than the engineering principle because that is being determined by the engineers they know how big the part is required okay how how strong the agitator and everything so it's a different set of uh, of, of expertise you can say so the biggest is just biology contributes uh, Okay, what's the best organism to produce this? How do you engineer the organism? How do you uh, take advantage of the processes in the cell that then again will facilitate you doing the bioprocess? Secondly, uh, they engineer, uh, for example, enzymes. So it's more of a, it depends how you say upstream, downstream, but we play a different role. I hope that answers the question. Uh, I'm very interested about the, 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 the biofilm. What do you mean oh, by the biofilm there? Oh, biofilm. Uh, I think the same as uh, the biofilm. Uh, okay, this one. Using okay, uh, biofilm is a uh, uh, an organic film left uh, created by organism on a surface any surface you can see that your your mucus when you cough that's a biofilm okay when you go into into the piping sewage system okay on the walls all this um, mucus or lande or whatever that coats the surface that's a biofilm here you it doesn't look that way because one the exact the bacteria is homogeneous okay these are well, uh, this is lab bacteria, so we have a, a consistent surface, consistent color. Right? So when you say biofilm, is that a, 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 a layer of organic substance produced by the cell, usually on the uh, surface, the physical surface. How thick is it? Uh, how thick? Okay, how thick depends on the age of the biofilm. Uh, for example. Okay, let's say you have a bacteria. A bacteria will not produce a biofilm if it's in solution. Uh, it uses uh, something called quorum, quorum sensing. Okay, let's say I'm a bacteria, a very big bacteria. <laughs> so I'm floating around in water. This is water. I won't be producing uh, biofilm because uh, I'm more or less mobile. If I am stuck to the wall, right? Okay, I consider this as my new home, so I've produced the biofilm okay, as, as a covering, as a layer of protection against, I don't know, outside, another bacteria or movement water. So it only starts when there's enough bacteria to form a colony. That's why they use, they call it quorum sensing. They sense, okay, there's enough of us, let's produce biofilm. How thick is it? Depends on a lot of factors, species, age, the, the the more the bacteria adheres to the surface, the thicker it is, and you have at the bottom is usually the dead bacteria, it's like coral, uh, getting thicker. That's why you, uh, you have a phenomenon called uh, biofouling. Uh, biofouling, biofouling in, in, in pipes that. Uh, Uh, this one, pipe cleaning. Yeah? Yes. So when you have this surface, bacteria cannot form biofilm. If you if you cut the uh, squid, there's a, yes. a layer of like, plastic. Yes. That what the, 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 the tulang, the, the uh, bones. The, the, the plastic, yeah, that's transparent. Cartilage. Ah that. uh, yes, that's that's cartilage. Oh, cartilage. Uh, okay, because uh, uh, okay. Uh, squid is a family, if you look at evolution, mm. according to Darwin, uh, our ancestors. So what they have, the single cartilage, is the forefather of our spine. Mm. Right? So a very, very primitive spine. So we call it the north of cord. So is, is that really not the way to do? I hope. <laughs> uh, Yes, uh, you mentioned bioinformatics. Yes. What is it actually? Does it involve informatics and statistics? Okay, um, bioinformatics. Uh, bioinformatics is not here. I mean, some bioinformatics will be angry here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Why I didn't put bioinformatics? Because why? Bioinformatics is not a new science, per se, a new field. I mean, bioinformatics database existed since 1956. So it's, it's not something like, oh, bioinformatics, you know, something new. No, 1956, there already a database on protein characteristic. Okay. And, and sec secondly, uh, bioinformatics is now, it's not the future. Okay. And bioinformatics is basically, you manage data. Okay. I have lots and lots of biological data. Okay. For example, you have 3 billion DNA bases. The length. If I take out a single cell out of you and pull out the DNA, it will be two meters long. From here to here, it will be two meters long. Every single cell has two meter long. If I were to take each cell and tie the ends of each DNA, you will stretch to Mars and back. That's how much DNA you have. That's you, your DNA. How about you, 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 you? So what biomedic is? is this biological data somebody needs to manage this to analyze this for example some people it's easy for them to gain weight right some people it's hard for them to gain weight because why they have genes inside their body that allows them to have higher metabolism so that's encoded in the 3 billion base pair and the 2 meters so for example the future the, uh, of drug and medicine will be i have your genetic profile i know what your gene says I know if you have a predisposition to, for example, diabetes. From the day you were born, the doctor will know that oh, this person cannot eat too much carbohydrate. He will have diabetes because he has a cluster of diabetic-related genes. But to get to that information, you need to have computer scientists to manage the data, to mine the data. You need mathematicians to, to find out the best algorithm for example, if you want to model the blood circulation, you need algorithm to model all this. You need biochemists to determine the chemical reaction, the pathway, enzyme, uh, enzyme kinetics. Because biology is not biology is not one plus one two. Biology is one plus one three. Yes, biology is all about exceptions. Uh, that's that's the, the the difficulty about biology. When you see that. Uh, F equals MA, F equal, if, if, uh, will equal MA in Malaysia, in USA, in Russia, but not biology. When you say, that, okay, this species will have this gene, this frog will have this, when you go to this frog, the same species, but oh, there's another variable, there's another variety of frog, same species, same genus, but doesn't have this gene. So that's the problem. So in order to manage all this data, that's mean 6 billion people equivalent to 6 billion 2 meter long DNA code. Right? That's the future. So, computer scientists, mathematician, everything put together. Well, the biology usually is the project leader. Right? Then you have the mathematician and all the chemists. And that's, that's bioinformatics. Uh, the, the, the biggest contributor is mathematics and computers. And you do have a course. Uh, we do have department. no. It's a, with uh, Dr. Ito's department, faculty science computer uh, and uh, science computer and information system. Uh, they have a degree B.Sc in bioinformatics. They have a masters also, some sort of masters, and they have Professor Fahy Idris uh, who runs the bioinformatics and artificial intelligence research group. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, artificial intelligence. Uh, we don't have in FBB because why? Uh, we don't have pure computational people there. We we have what we have what we have uh, biologists that we have problems that require mathematical solution or computational solution. So no, not yet. I mean, if anybody wants to join, and start by making students, you are most welcome. Okay, before we start from the science, yeah, lots of uh, methods were inspired by biology. Uh, either like, you know, the acquisition layer network, yeah. yes, yes. genetic algorithm, whatever. Yes. But the problem, we, if we copy this like, method from the biology, we cannot explain why this is good, why this is bad. 
because why? We we wait for the value to to to, to, <laughs> to explain this because we just copy uh, this method. Yeah? Mm -hmm. some, some people don't like to do. Just uh, last week, question from Kevin and introduce the new method as well. Inspired by very just by the call artificial food system <coughs> lies. Yes. Also, it from yes. The, but also this he said uh, it's not. Uh, I understand why this is good, why this is bad. So maybe you can answer why this Okay, why? Okay, for example, uh, uh, have you heard Cicadas? Uh, C-I-C-A-D-A. Cicadas. Uh, how many years did it come out? Every seven years. Okay, this species of cengkrik lah, you like to call it cengkrik, but it's not our small cengkrik, it's like yeah. this big, just beat my hand. This cengkrik will lie dormant in the ground for seven years. Seven years. Happening. Okay. Happening. Okay. For example, another thing is uh, siput gondang. I think you're familiar with siput gondang emas. If you're from the paddy field, okay. Tuas ringgit per kilo dia buy in restaurant Siput guna mask can hibernate for 6 months under the the mud without eating without doing anything and we don't we don't even know why how how can you how can you stay down I, I cannot sleep for 6 hours maybe <laughs> longer than that you know uh, cicada stay underground for 7 years and they come out mate grow and lay their eggs and die and comes out another 7 years just, just to highlight, there are lots and lots of things that we don't even know. How, why, I mean, why seven, why not six? Right, so, the best thing, I, I don't know how best to answer the question. Because we do experiments, professional experiments, we present, and then some of them say, if we use this data, it's good that we use AI and artificial data. Yes. Why, why is this good? We don't know, we just uh, execute <laughs> yes, <laughs> the problem. Execute. Okay, this, uh, well, that's why some uh, uh, places for motion they prefer to develop uh, by their, their algorithm so they can explain, explain something. So, but uh, most of them uh, use this method is uh, very good performance. Uh, but the problem is how we explain the result. This is uh, the main issue. Uh, they are copying the by the which by the maybe uh, yeah, by starting I, 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 I I'm, I'm not sure myself how to explain. There's a lot of phenomena that you can't explain. But that does this has never stopped Baritis in their research. I mean, we know the stuff. Okay, we don't know how to explain it. There's no formula for this. And okay, let's do something else. No. For example, if you have agronomy, botany, it's okay, you put two species together, you get a nice fruit, and you don't stop there, you propagate the fruit, I mean, the research goes on. But it would never reach the level of, for example, physics in terms of explanation, like you say. It will never. Before the end of the sessions, I would like to invite our director.